Maybe you'd be interested to know how it happened that three organs were delivered to Tolliver Street in one day. To understand how it happened, you have to know a little about some of the folks who live in those houses on the street. They're nice houses, those three, and the folks who live in them are nice people, too. Kind of different from one another, but all pleasant people. That's Pete Baker on his way to the biggest outfit in town. Has a very important job down there, they tell me. That's his wife, Betty, as you'd guess. Marjorie. And Jimmy, with his usual amount of time to spare. That's Mr. and Mrs. Green, who live next door. Retired folks. And that's Doc Miller's house. Looks real quiet from the outside, doesn't it? Doc Miller looks real quiet from the outside, too. Just like lots of us. What's it this time, Harry? Glasses. They're not in the desk, dear. Well, you know where they are? Well, Gladys, if you know where they are, look, it's getting late. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye, dear. Maybe you're wondering what's on Doc's mind. If you're expecting something dramatic, you're wrong. There's nothing on his mind today. There isn't any day. He's just in a hurry like most of us. Gladys, that's his wife, keeps telling him he needs some way to slow down, some way to relax. If you've ever seen Doc down at the drugstore, you'll admit that Gladys has got something there. Doc fills about a million prescriptions a day. But he never gave much thought to a formula for forgetting the daily pressures that go with his work. That is, not until one afternoon a couple of months ago. Doc was ambling along as usual when someone happened to get the message through. Can't tell you just what hit him, but it hit him hard. I suspect he's had a yen to play one of those machines. He felt kind of strange at first, standing there, asking questions. But, the way he tells it, he kept having this picture in his mind. He could see himself getting home from a rough day and sitting down at the organ to play a piece. Nothing elaborate, just a little tune before dinner. One way or another, he had about a million questions to ask. The store manager suggested that a home demonstration of the organ might be just the thing to answer them. Maybe Doc would like to invite some neighbors in, too. Doc agreed that might be a good idea, and the date was made for a few evenings later. Mr. Osborne, Eddie Osborne here, is going to show us how this little organ works. Now, I don't know exactly what he's going to do with it, but I'll leave that up to him. Thanks a lot, Mr. Miller. The whole purpose of these gatherings is to acquaint people with this organ. Now, I'll probably say some things you already know, but usually there are some folks uh, who don't know anything about this instrument at all. So, uh, i just like to start from the beginning. Uh, mostly, uh, my part of these demonstrations is to play. I've played pipe organ since I was big enough to reach the pedals. I just get a kick out of it. And uh, that's why I'm pleased to demonstrate this little home organ. 
especially for folks who aren't interested in becoming a professional. You see, there are two keyboards, manuals we call them. The upper manual is a solo. You play that with your right hand. Now, a beginner can concentrate on that right hand because down here, on the left side, you don't need much. This lower manual is called the accompaniment, and you use it to do just that. Accompany the tune you play up here, but you see, all you have to do is put three fingers here. Now here. Then there's another group of keys called the pedals. Your left foot plays them one at a time. These are pretty terrific for a little organ. Put them all together and they spell organ, like this. Now, the thing that makes the organ so fascinating is that it doesn't have just one tone. Actually, it has four tonal families. Sort of like the sections of an orchestra. The reeds, that is, the saxophone, the clarinet, the oboe, and over here, the trumpet. Then, the flutes. The bourdon, the flute, the tibia family, the flute, the strings, the salitional, the salicet, the gem's horn, and the violina. The diapasons. Here's the pedal diapason, and over here, the horn diapason, and way over here, the octave. They are the pure organ tones, only on the organ. These tablets, you call them stops, are the way you choose the various voices or tone colors. Now, for instance, suppose we take the Reed family. See if anyone knows what this solo stop is. That's a trumpet. That's right, Jimmy. Now in the same family. See if you can tell me what this is. Is it a nobo? Exactly. The fun of playing the organ is that you combine these different kinds of sounds. You can play one instrument or a combination of instruments up here and accompany it with a different sound down here. But the big thing about this little organ, and this is really a test of an electronic organ, is that it has pure organ tone. Um, look, this is too much talking and not enough playing. And now, for Mrs. Green, I'm going to feature the flutes in just a part of an old favorite. Just sit back and relax now and listen to this number in real theater style. Remember Charmaine? feature on this organ. This is something that's really fun. 
especially for a beginner. It's what we call our percussion ensemble. You see, you can get some wonderful effects with it. For instance, let me take just a soft accompaniment, a little bit of pedal, nothing up here on the solo excepting percussion, just the vibraharp. very interesting combination on the percussion. Uh, it sounds sort of like a tinkle bell or maybe a glockenspiel. I'm taking a real old tune and I'm playing it real simple. I hope you like it. percussion stop that impresses me most is the Hoan guitar. I think it's one of the greatest. Um, you be the judge. There are just a few of the effects that we can get with the percussion ensemble. There are many hundreds, which I don't have time to demonstrate at this point. But here's one of my very, very great favorites. It's the old banjo. Uh, see if you can keep your feet still on this one. Before I go on, of course, I kind of like this stuff, you know. <laughs> but uh, are there any more questions? Well, yes. Uh, doesn't that take a lot of current to run? Oh, uh, about as much as an electric iron, Mr. Miller. Oh, an electric iron. But it sounds ever so much prettier than an electric iron, Mr. Osborne. Marjorie, stop bothering Mr. Osborne. What I want to know is how she works. Well, of course, I know something about pipe organs, but... This is the first time I ever saw one of these electronic ones. Uh, what, uh, what makes the sound? I brought something along that I think might explain better to you how this organ works. Uh, would you all like to see it? Oh, oh yes. 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 Well, fine, I'll get it. Be right back. All right. This is very much simplified, but I do think it'll show all of you just how an electronic organ works. First of all, I'll plug this into the electric socket just like I did the organ. Here, let me do it. Thank you, Jimmy. You see, the current comes in this way, and it goes here first. This is the power supply, and your alternating current is converted to direct current here. Then, it flows along to the tone generator. That's where this tube is lit up. You mean the tube itself makes the tone? 
That's right. Uh, the tube oscillates. Uh, well, I'd say it vibrates electrically. Uh, sometimes a tube and a radio will do the same thing when you're tuning in. You know, kind of a high whistling sound. Well, actually, the electricity comes into the tone generator or the tube and is converted into a signal. That signal flows along to the key. But it stopped right there because there isn't any contact, right? Now, when I push down this key, the signal will come this far to the tone color tabs. These are just like the stops on the organ. They choose that part of the signal coming through which sounds like the instrument we're trying to simulate. And they filter out all the rest of the signal. Like putting something through a strainer. Exactly. Now, I'll push the key down. There's no sound because the signal stopped here. But when I push one of these stop tablets, just the part of the signal we want will go through to the amplifier here. The amplifier builds up that signal so it can be heard through the speaker. So, it goes round and round and comes out here. Then this part's just like a radio or phonograph. That's right, but in the organ it's really high fidelity. Uh, just one more thing now and then I think we're ready to try it out. You see, here, when I press this down, it makes a gradual contact. This light shows you how that works. The further down I push the key, the more signal gets through. It's a gradual contact. Any special reason for that? As far as organ tone is concerned, the most special reason in the world. You see, the effort here is to get as close to two pipe organ tone as possible. Now, a, a pipe organ tone sounds that way. Uh, as the air goes into the pipe, the tone gets rounder and fuller. You won't find this on other electronic organs, by the way. Uh, this special gradual contact arrangement also eliminates that pop and click that some electronic organs have. Well, now, uh, let's try it. Do you want to take a chance? Me? Sure. Okay. Choose your stop. Oboe or flute? Oboe. Now let's uh, let's try the flute. All right. <laughs> Say, that's very interesting, very ingenious. That's great. But could you play a couple of more tunes for us? Well, if you'd all really like to hear some more, we'd love to. Okay, I'll go to some stuff that I really have fun with. Okay, hang on to your hats now. We'll have a little rock and roll. What do you say? Jimmy, take it easy. Say, can I try it a bit? You bet you can, Mr. Miller. That's what it's here for. Oh, yes. Come on, sit down. I have the left hand here now. I got a nice cord. Mm -hmm. Fingers are kind of limber. You know what that is? It's up here now. That's, that's 
That's all right. Now listen to that sound, boy. Agree? Mm, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you feel powerful. You know what I mean? I know just what you mean. Maybe we'll just leave this baby here. Or get its twin sent over. You know, I don't suppose I'll ever get to play like you do, but <laughs> <laughs> after all, I'll get some music out of it by and by. I know you will. <laughs> it didn't take that long. Doc Miller was able to play a little tune that night. It made him feel as though he had just climbed Mount Everest. It made his wife feel that at last Doc had found something important for himself. I guess you could call it a hobby if you wanted to. Or maybe something a little more important than that. But one way or the other, it was fun. Once those organs had found their way to Tolliver Street, there was pleasure for lots of people. It was Mr. Green who wanted the organ. But Mrs. Green said if her granddaughter could get a sense of how to play the organ from a color chart, well, she was willing to start too. Mrs. Green went on to study with a qualified teacher, really the best way of all to get the most from a home organ. Mrs. Green found out that learning to play had changed a lot since the time she was a girl. She was playing tunes from the word go. Meanwhile, Jimmy Baker began to learn to play by a new simplified chord system. A fast, easy way to learn, which suited Jimmy. You uh, may have noticed that Jimmy's a young man in a hurry. And Doc. Doc began to pick up speed with a special device that thinks up the chords for your left hand. Didn't mind using it because he knew that when he was done with it, he could discard it and go on to the real thing. Meanwhile, he didn't have to wait for the fun of making his own music. Of course, different people have different styles and different ways of learning. But whatever the style or whatever the way, there was a sound of fun and pleasure on Tolliver Street. Something else growing on Tolliver Street besides skill, too. You see, a home organ has a way of doing something else besides making music. It can build a bridge between the young and the old, between a husband and his wife. Between a boy and his friends. And the fun and the pleasure that it gives have a way of reaching out to include others. Music is a little like all the good things in life, I guess. It blesseth those who give as much as those who receive. Well, that's it. That's the story of the day they came to Tolliver Street. And by the way, don't you think it would be pretty nice if they came to yours? Peace.